themselves. And there is there's a difference between the way that the Eastern um, people look at look at the physical body and the way the West look at physical body. And then you have the way that the Taoists look at the uh, person's physical body. We we have a random number. We say, well, there's ten thousand and one different moves that, that a person that the human body could accomplish. But like I said in previous lecture, you you have approximately uh, two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty joints in the body, but each of the joints are made to made to move a specific way. But although we were able to dominate those movements um, in in many ways. Um, that doesn't mean that we should, because in trying to dominate those movements, actually cause degradation of the joints itself. In order for something to move, there has to be a space between the two objects, regardless of, of, of how close or how far. If it's closer, then it's harder to move. It's farther away. There's a certain amount of flexibility. And if it's too far, then it's, uh, it becomes even more, more difficult. Understanding the human body is, is a matter of not just experimentation, but also understanding yourself. Because we, in fact, every single person is completely unique. And you cannot go back and, and, and say, I'm going to duplicate or follow exactly what another person is doing. Because of having your unique body, your movement has to be catered specifically for your body and not for someone else. If you see somebody do a movement and you try and you try to imitate it, what you have to do is take ownership of it. See how your body particularly adjusts to that particular movement. Instead of trying to, to, to copy or to imitate that movement. Each of your body has its own limitation. Not just a limitation when people say generalize, this is what your movement is supposed to be. You have to learn, learn specifically how this particular body works. This is what I'm talking about, taking particular ownership for it. For instance, when you, when you raise your hands up like this, if you, feel, if you feel tension in the back, you know that you need to raise it just a certain amount without feeling, feeling tension. In other words, you have to be super sensitive to exactly what the body is trying to tell you and how to react to what is, what is selling you. You know, we, we're, ex, we're probably the worst students there is when it comes to, to learning from our own bodies. Because constantly, and your body's relentless in trying to teach you over these years, but we're re relentless, meaning that we, we put our fingers in our ears and we, we decide that we're not gonna learn, we're gonna try to overpower it because we think we need to dominate um, these movements. Say, for instance, when you raise raise your hands up, you're told that you should raise raise your hand, and, and you could raise your hand out like this. Raising your hands all the way out like this is going to cause the the, uh, the collar bones to to push back inside, the breastbone to spread apart, and also to have some impact on the clavicles as well as the uh, the shoulder bone. A person's body is designed in this position, not this way, not that way, this way. You always want to find that, that, that portion where the body is completely comfortable in its movement. In other words, you have to find that we call it the Ming zone, the zone that you, you, you're not aware, that you don't feel anything. Because if you feel it, that means there's something, something wrong. The body's trying to tell you, you need to make some kind of adjustment. And if you go to the part that you hardly feel anything, that's where the body is much, much more um, comfortable in, it, in its movement. For instance, um, let's, let's try first balance, um, first balance. Now, if, if a person um, has the particular disease in, in, in Parkinson's, one of the first things that, that seem to disappear is um, to diminish very quickly is, is the balance and coordination. And it's, it's for many reasons, not just a neurological reason, but also psychological reasons as well. Because what happens is that 
you, you begin to drop your head to look down at the floor, to look down the space um, below you, and then take short, short, tiny steps, okay? But taking the same short, tiny step, first of all, going straight ahead like this and taking shiny, shorty step and bending the head forward. In reality, what happens is that you actually are bending forward, dropping the head forward and taking, taking steps like this. So basically, it's, it's a series of falling and trying to catch yourself at the same time. Because the weight now is going forward, the weight of the head is going forward, and then you're basically uh, stumbling. There are six muscles that control the eyes. The eyes could pan around more than 180 degrees, could pan all the way this way. It could look up, down, and many other directions. There is no need to move the head in, in doing it. If you want to look down, look down, but don't drop the head down. Once you drop the head down, you're going to impede the body's ability to balance based on many things. One would be, um, the spinal column is here, the spinal fuel is going down. Once you drop the head like this, you're taking that tube and you're bending it. That restricts the amount of spinal fluid that's going down. It also restricts the movement of, of the spine itself. It also sends the weight forward, which is gonna impede your, your movements and your balance as well. So basically what you have to do is keep, keep yourself in your, in your comfortable position. And a comfortable position does not mean standing like this and bracing yourself back and straightening it. You want to have the natural flow of, of the, the spinal column, this natural flow right here. That'll hold you in place. You don't drop the head, keep the head up. You always pay attention. If you pay attention to the spine, the shoulders and the hips, falling is not an option. But if you don't pay attention to it, then falling becomes an option. Meaning that if you let everything rest where it's supposed to rest and use the eyes to look down and move from side to side, which is the way that you, you were meant to move because you did it as a child, but as an adult, you start uh, catering to try to move the body this way. Your pelvis is designed that its pelvis is bent out this way. The bones stick, sticks in it and it sticks out this way. Anytime you try to bring your foot in like that, you start feeling pain along this portion of the back and also within this area. When you put your foot out like that, it's, it's a little bit more relaxing because that is the way it was designed to be. So in, in, in walking and moving, first of all, and like I said, with the disease, the first thing you, 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 you fear is falling. And so you start to sharpen your step, drop the head, hunch the back in order to, to think that you're protecting yourself from falling. Actually, that increases the, the chances of falling. You keep, the head, you keep the head up and you take steps to the side, step to the side, not pronounced long steps. Each step, is supposed to be the width of your shoulders, not the shoulder of anybody else or not somebody else. So even if you're tall or short or, or any other size in, in between, what's going to determine your point of stability is the width of your shoulders and the width of your hip. Obviously, you've heard me say before, when a, when a tall person is walking, they usually like to take long steps. When a short person is walking, they take tiny steps like that. Both are wrong. The step is the size of the shoulders because that gives you a parallel uh, position where you're walking from side to side that maintain your balance. And it's perfect because you, you sit like this. Your heel is supposed to be in alignment with, with your shoulders. So when, when you step out, like this, you, you touch like this, this heel has to be completely in line with the shoulders. It can't be out of place. Out of place means uh, a pain or discomfort here, and also the idea of trying to, trying to balance. So when you take a step, the step has to be the width of your shoulders, but you do not look down. And I know that, that um, my, my students overall, um, hear me repeatedly over and over and over and 
a lot of them smile about it. They say, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down. But it's, it, it seems like um, people look down because they are untrusting about their own legs. You know, when you stand up, you kind of gaze down. It's like, yeah, they're down there and they'll always be down there as long as you're standing. You have to trust yourself to make sure that you're, you're standing and moving the way that you need to move. You trust your body, not the eyes to make acknowledgement that it's stepping. So if you could keep your, keep your head up and move in this way, and if you have to glance down, do not drop your head. Keep the head up in this position. Use the eyes to look down because you could look all the way down. You could stay like this and you could look pretty far down, gazing down. So when you step out like this, looking down is not a problem. What do you do like this? Everything goes forward and then you start losing the balance and coordination that, that you're striving for. So that makes, makes it difficult. So just to repeat myself, the width of your shoulders, the width of your hip, the width of your shoulders is the length of your step. When you move, you move from side to side, but you don't have to do it pronouncedly, just gently from side to side. That means that when, when you step, the back foot should always be at approximately 45 degrees in relationship to the front. So if I'm standing like this straight ahead and I move, that makes the back foot 45 in relationship to this one. When I take the step like this to move, then it changes position. Then it moves over um, that, that one position. So I move like this and move like this. So it goes um, back and forth. And that, that will help the, the balance and coordination. 